Hey there. Today I'm going to demo how to train a machine learning model in Cortex XOR to automatically classify phishing incidents. First, I'll say a few words about the data we're looking at here, and then I will show two different ways to train the model. And finally, we will see how to actually implement the model in your phishing playbook. So first off, for the demo today, I am actually using data from the Enron data set. And this data set is popular for machine learning research because it is a collection of real emails that came out during the investigation of Enron, and it was purchased and made available to researchers. But of course, for your model, you'll be using your own phishing incident data that you have collected in Cortex XOR. This will allow you to train a unique model to recognize the particular type of phishing and spam emails your organization receives. So here we are looking at the training data, meaning the data we will use to train our model. An important column to point out is this one, the email classification field. To train your model, you need to have a verdict field, which basically tells the model which verdicts or categories to group together and recognize so that it can predict those verdicts for future samples where it does not already know the expected result. This verdict field does not necessarily have to be email classification. You could instead use close reason or whichever field you would like for the verdicts. The verdict field in the training data must be populated, whether it was manually determined by analysts or some other logic in your playbook, so that the model does know the expected result for the samples it sees during training. My data here has three possible values for email classification, which are malicious, spam and legitimate. So this is pretty standard, these three values, but you are free to simplify this to just malicious and non-malicious, for example, or change the verbiage to reflect what your, what your organization uses. Great, so the first option for training the machine learning model is the simpler approach, which is to train the model directly in Cortex XOR. The downside to this approach is training an ML model can be very resource intensive on your XOR server. It is safer to train the model on your XOR development server and then import it into the production server. So this is where the second option comes in. This approach has you export the incident data to a file, train the model using a playbook, export the model, and then import the model into XOR. So first, let's take a look at option one, which is to train the model directly in XOR. You can do this under Settings, Advanced, ML Models. Here, click on New Model. Give your model a name. You can give it a description if you'd like. And here, you select the date range for when your training incidents were created. So for me, I'll go from October 1st through to December 1st. And here, this is our verdict field that determines the categories into which to group the samples. So in our case, this is the email classification field, which is helpfully suggested by Dbot here. And we see our three possible field values populate. The simplest verdicts that are available are simply malicious and non-malicious, but for our case, we will click edit verdicts. We've got malicious, we'll change this one to spam and set this one to legit. And then we simply drag and drop our field values to the appropriate verdicts. If you expand out the advanced section here, you'll see some additional options. So this one is a query that you can enter to narrow down the set of incidents used to train your model. And this is the exact same query syntax that you can copy and paste from the incidents page. So I will copy that in here. You can set the language of the model and then also the maximum number of incidents to include as part of the training. And then here you can set which fields to use for the email body, email HTML, and email subject. For my data set, the default values here are right. So we are all set and I will click on start training. Training the model will take several minutes 
and you can click away from this page. Just watch out for a pop-up at the bottom that will let you know when the training process is done. In the meantime, let's take a look at option two, which is training the model from a file using a playbook. The first step here is to go to the incidents page and filter for the incidents you will use to train your model. So you'll see this is the exact same query I copied in to train our model directly in XOR. On this page, select all and note that by default, just the first page is selected. So make sure you click here to really select all and then click on export. And this will download a CSV file of your training data. So the really important thing to note here is you do need all of the fields used as part of the training process. So in our case, this was email body, email body HTML and email subject. These emails are plain text. So email body HTML is blank which is fine. If you did have HTML emails, this is another good data point to include in the training process. And then lastly, we also need our verdict field, which in our case is email classification. Next, you will need to upload the exported CSV file so that you can run the playbook on it. You can do this either in the playground or in an incident. So I am just going to upload it to the playground. And while we're waiting for that to upload, let's go to playbooks. And here you will either need to detach or duplicate the out of the box playbook called dbot create phishing classifier v2 from file. So I'll just detach it. And the reason we need to do this is there are a few playbook inputs we need to modify. So for the file ID, if you have a single file in your incident, as we do, you can simply enter file.entry ID here. But otherwise, you can copy the exact file entry ID from the war room and hard code it into here. For model name, which is down here, we specify what we want to name our model. And then here, email text key, you can change the fields used for email body, email HTML, and email subject if needed, but we are just sticking with the defaults. And for email tag key, we need to enter the name of the field we are using for the email verdict, which in our case is email classification. The phishing labels input allows you to get more complicated with the logic for mapping the verdicts if needed, but we can simply stick with the possible values for email classification, which are malicious, spam, and legitimate, so we don't need to fill this out. And we will slightly increase the max incidence to fetch on training uh, from the default of 5,000 up to 6,000 to make sure we include all of our training samples in the training process. As you see, there are a lot of other options here that you can play with, like the ddeep threshold, for example, for considering incidents to be duplicates, model target accuracy. But all of these defaults are fine for training our initial model. We don't need to modify any of those, so we'll just click on Save. And now we can return to the playground. We see that our CSV file export has finished uploading. So now let's click over to the work plan and select our playbook to train our model. So dbot create phishing classifier v2 from file, we'll run that. And again, this will take a few minutes to complete. Great, so here we see our machine learning model was trained successfully. And if we click in here, we can see a lot of great detail about the confidence scores and precision of our model with some explanation of what all these values mean. And this also links you directly out to our documentation, which has some further information about this process. All right, so once our training playbook is done running, we see that this was successful, it's done training the model. And similarly here, we get a lot of data about the metrics for our model. 
And now we can go to settings, advanced ML models to download it. So we see our model here, we can click on the download button. And then you can go into a different XOR instance if needed, say if you're exporting this from dev into prod and navigate back to the same page and then click on this upload model button. And then you would be able to upload your model from here. In our case, of course, it's already here, so no need to do that extra step. So that's it. That is the second option for training your ML model. The last thing we will go over today is how to actually implement your newly trained machine learning model in your fishing playbook so that you can use it to predict the verdict for future fishing incidents. To do this, we will edit our fishing playbook. And if your playbook is based on the out of the box fishing generic V3 playbook, simply look for the fishing model name in the inputs. I believe it is close to the bottom. There it is. And here we'll pass in the name of our model that we just trained and then click on save. And if you scroll down a bit here, you can see the part of the playbook where this is actually used. So here is the task that's going to use the model to predict the verdict. And then here it checks whether there was a prediction. And if so, it will update these incident fields accordingly. So if we look back on the incidents page, we can see the latest fishing samples coming in and anything after around 1120 is when our new model was implemented. So let's open up and take a look at one of these. We can see this one was predicted as spam. So if we look at the investigation page, we can see the email text, for example, does look pretty spammy, some financial related data, probably a newsletter, something the user was subscribed to. Obviously these are very old emails, so the screenshots are not something we can rely on anymore. And then here we see Dbot has predicted this is spam with a prediction probability of just over 80%. So not terribly high, um, but that's good context for an analyst who might be looking at this. And then here we can see the text that Dbot pulled out that caused it to land on the spam classification. So looking at the email text here, I would probably agree with this, might do a little more research if uh, this was a real live email, but um, seems like spam is the correct classification here. And here now we can see a few more samples have uh, finished processing and now have a prediction of legit. These actually have a much higher prediction probability score, which is interesting. So let's take a look at one of these. And if we look in the investigation tab, here we see the email text. Looks like pretty short, simple emails between um, colleagues perhaps, or between the employee and family. And here we can see very few indicators, just really the ones from the email addresses. And so here again, it looks like Dbot did a pretty good job classifying this as legit with nearly 100% probability. And this is why is, is this text here. So that covers the fundamentals of machine learning in Cortex XOR. Hopefully you know a bit more about ML now and please reach out to your customer success team if you have any questions.